Greetings, Fire Chargers, Dark Blade here, and this is just some progress update on my library books that I borrowed yesterday. So on this book, I have already made it up to uh, page 15. Then again, I skipped past it's page 7 in previous pages, as I didn't, they weren't relevant to the language itself. I've also made it up to like the section or chapter 12 of my ancient Greek book, but that was in previous borrowings. There are about, in total there are, stop that, oh wait, I'm doing that, so I do want it to do that, 24 units. And then there's appendixes. There's the paradigm of Luo, which is like the paradigm for which is for ancient Greek. And there's a conjugation of contractive verb and the presence in invert perfect tense because no other tense contracts with some exceptions for some futures. There's the conjugation of these certain irregulars. There's Amy, which means be in Erchomai, which I think is the future form of Amy. And there's also, no, wait, there's Erchomai and another where this one is Amy, which means come or go. And, er and Erchomai is like that. There's, there's femi, which means say, and oida, which means no. Strange that it doesn't end in an omega or a, or a, or a mu yota. Maybe it's a verb that only exists in certain tenses, in certain non-present tenses. Then there are root alrists. Presumably their paradigm. And the contraction of some more of some more regular, presumably, what's it called? Me verbs. Those are didomi means give. Tit titemi, which titemi, which means put a place and is this Iemi, which means let go, and Istemi, I said before, and Istemi, which means make stand. Then there's the conjugation of Deknumi, which means in the present imperfect. Then there are numbers, accent patterns, stuff about Greek poetry, crassus, which is a type of contraction that occurs at the boundaries between words it only happens with combinations of certain words that are involved like articles or the conjunction chi which means and and active verbs used in a passive sense and some more oddities of declension then there are the principal parts of verbs let me get this right the principal parts are there's the present indicative active. There's the future indicative active, which in most ultra regular verbs is just the present indicative active with a sigma at the end of the stem. There's also the hours, the hours passive, and the present, I mean the perfect. Then there's vocab, which goes on for over 100 pages, and suggestions for further study. I haven't started that pink Latin book, though. And this is Complete Ancient Greek by Gavin Betts and Alan Henry. I wrote a lot on this book. And here are what each of the sections are about. There's acknowledgments, meet the authors, yada yada, introduction, which is presumably an introduction of the history of the Greek language itself. How to use this book, abbreviations that are used in this book, 
and they give us a map of ancient Greece, just like the small book I picked up earlier has a map of Nepal. And this is unit one is the Greek al alphabet and accents, which is generally just to make sure you know what Greek looks like, how to pronounce it, and how to write it. Then there is unit two, unit three, which talks about basic nouns, the most fundamental and uh, nouns, how they work. It goes over the first declension feminine nouns and the feminine word for the, basic use of, of cases, more specific uses of non nominative cases are covered later. And there are the verbs in Greek. It can see the presence and future indicative of all verbs, verbs that end in an omega, which is the majority of them, of regular non-deponent verbs. And even me verbs are conjugated in ways identical to o verbs in certain forms. Okay, what's funny? Then there's the word order and elision. Elision. Then there's some Greek reading and vocab. I think all the way up through section unit 9 there's vocab. And in unit 3 it introduces us to second declension, which includes a lot of masculine and neuter nouns and also the masculine and neuter definite article. After this you now know you will now know all the different ways to say the in Greek. Then there's the first declension masculine nouns, because there are some of those. First and second declension adjectives were introduced to adjectives and adverbs. Then they want to tell us about prepositions and the presence indicative of this word, any, which means I am. Then some Greek reading, where they basically give you some sentence, some Greek sentences, and, and at one point, some points you are given it entire full-length Greek passages and some vocab. Unit 4 gives us the imperfect and weak aorist, not to be confused with the strong aorist. I think you get that in Unit 6 or 7 of O verbs. Then the first and second person pronouns the ways to say I and you, and these ways to say basically him or her or his or or them, or their, or its, or it, but none of that he, she, they, they get. Then there's the connecting particles, and you get this. Then there's some units two to four vision exercises. Then in unit five, it introduces the third declension, which there are sev which there are two main types of third declension and several other subtypes within those types. Anyway, this is where I'll end the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Dark Blade out, and probably reading Greek until my next video, and also watching from me to you, which I recently started, I think, the day before yesterday.